Hi folks, it's Dr. Christine Sauer again and as you might have noticed I love science reviews. Uh, when I'm reading articles I think about them and I think about you as my audience that is probably also a woman that is past their prime or 30s, 40s, something like that and maybe even struggles with weight just like I did seriously and I'm still doing and I am looking at science from a standpoint of a physician and a naturopath. And of course I had lots more training as a gut health specialist, as a mental health uh, professionals and stuff like that. And brain health is my interest. So I have a lot of knowledge and now it's my time to share it. And I'm starting with you. And I'm so happy you're listening to that. Weight loss in later life women is more than diet and exercise, wow. Conventional medicine realizes it. Now, when I read that, of course, I get suspicious because we know that Ozempic or Vigovi, those modern weight loss drugs have come around. They may be beneficial in diabetes and I'm not so sure if they're beneficial in weight loss in the long term. Besides their expense, uh, if you interfere with the hormones in the body too much unnecessarily and in the brain, I don't know what will happen in the long term. Those drugs are not out long term. We know they cause cancer. We know they cause serious gastrointestinal side effects. So I'm not so sure. Just leave it by that. I'm not against every drug. I'm not against surgery for weight loss. I had it myself. But the problem is to keep it off in the long run, right? And we all know that if you struggle with weight. Unwanted vein is a common problem. Yes and sh attempts at shedding pounds are not working. Often they are not. And I, in the last 40 years since I became a physician, I've thought over and over about why that is and how we can change it. Now the truth is nearly three fourths of women aged 60 and older are overweight. Some may blame menopause, the hormonal decline uh, of estrogens for this trend, and it certainly has an influence. And they say aging causes weight gain. Now that is not that is nonsense. Just because on average women get heavier when they age, that does not mean that aging causes weight gain. Now that is a fallacy and they just fall into it. It is true that women gain about a pound and a half per year on average. But it's not the age that causes the weight gain. It's a complex issue. And I wrote a blog post about the five dimensions of obesity and how to lose weight. Now, a lot of women hate it because they gain so many pounds. I agree. I know. And the shortage of specialists means primary care clinicians must understand the intersection of weight management and how the body functions. Well, I'm not so sure that they really know that anymore because they are so overwhelmed and so busy themselves. Even the best meaning of doctors cannot understand the details of it. And that's why I specialize in weight loss that lasts and weight loss that works. Now, the importance of weight management in midlife cannot be overemphasized. Okay. And why is that? Excess weight around the middle increases the risk of diabetes and heart disease. And that is directly related to the loss of estrogen. I agree in part of that, but that does not explain why, for example, 100 or 200 years ago, women did not get big when they got older or past menopause. There's other reasons too. For example, environmental toxins. Many of them are meant to interfere with all kinds of hormones and get us bigger. Obesogenes, they are called. And there's other issues like toxins and, 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 and nutrient deficiencies and inflammation. And that's why I help in my weight loss programs. I offer supplement options that help address those issues my gut health module. I love it. Now, the redistribution, yeah, we know that it does. Menopause compounds the changes associated with aging. It makes them worse. Maybe it does. Maybe it's not just the hormonal loss because women over the centuries have aged and they have uh, aged and gotten older and older and stayed healthy. So it's not just the age that makes our brains function less. 
Okay. Ah, he recommends clinicians look for adipose tissue dysfunction <laughs> because our fat has actually functions. We can use the metabolic switch to help us lose weight and switch our fat cells from fa um, weight gain from storing fat to relaxing and releasing the fat. That's one thing we can do. I like to talk about that in my programs. And then, of course, we can help the fatty tissue also <laughs> by helping it to relax weight and, and, and nu nu uh, give the, the brain all the nutrition that it needs so the fat can be burned and the energy generation goes up and we can reset the metabolic thermostat of the body. So we get more energy and we have uh, we get more fat burning instead of fat storing with that thermostat and the thermostat needs nutrients if you suffer from nutrient deficiencies because all you eat is twinkies now that's an extreme case well you will always be hungry crave and gain weight now that said insulin resistance metabolic syndrome it's a classic case of wrongful nutrition of being malnourished People that are overweight are malnourished. All right, beyond diet and exercise, what are they thinking about? Physical activity, I'm all for it. Day-to-day -day movement, changes in day-to-day -day movement. That's what I teach in my classes. I call it intentional, intuitive moving. We can increase fat burning and muscle building which by the way prevents increases balance and increases stability and muscle mass and reduces the risk of frailty and falling we can do that by moving more intentional and intuitive even when we just wash dishes or clean the house we don't have to go to the gym and do strenuous and stressful exercises well, if you like it, you can do it. If you want to do it, sure, go ahead. It will go faster, but you don't have to. You can add intentional, intuitive movement to nearly anything you do. Isn't that liberating? And what's important is transitioning the patient from feeling like they've failed to a mindset of seeking help or seeking care for this condition. Well, how about empowering us to take care of our own body, mind and spirit and liberating us from having to be a patient and being patient and waiting for somebody else to help. I think as women, especially as smart women, like if you're listening to that, I am sure you're smart. How about we just empower ourselves and my program enables that yes sometimes you need help for a certain time but not forever because obesity is not a forever condition uses the idea of good enough with their patients and suggests they think of weight loss as a journey which may require different tools at various points i agree with that absolutely too uh, better start it and do it good enough then never do it and procrastinate because you think you need to do it perfectly. It won't work. Now then, of course, they go into the most effective drugs like semaglutide, which is Ozempic or Vigovi, or Tersebatid. Now, as I said before, I'm critical of those drugs. They are not long, long enough on the market. If you choose to do it, you have to know that they can have serious side effects and they are quite expensive and as soon as you stop taking them you will gain the weight back. For me it's not a good solution. If you're really very much overweight like more than 100 pounds you may want to consider weight loss surgery. I had it myself 16 years ago but as you may know, many people that had weight loss surgery in the past, yes, you lose a lot of weight after the surgery. You can't help but they force you. It's a very powerful tool. It has serious side effects. If you don't do the right things, like supplement, check your uh, vitamin scores, check your nutrition and eat high nutrition afterwards for the rest of your life, you will get uh, 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 tired you'll lose your energy because your nutrition is not enough 
So you have to know what you're doing when you go for those tools because many people revert after they use those tools to their normal way of eating and gain it all back. And then they had only bad effects. It's not helpful then. Hormone replacement therapy depends what how you replace it. I'm a fan of bioidentical hormone replacement if administered by a really good practitioner. Hard to get here in Canada, by the way. Uh, I wouldn't combine it with the weight loss tool. I'm sorry, I don't. I'm not afraid that we just don't know what they're really doing to us. <laughs> Using diet and exercise alone do not maintain. Of course not. It doesn't help. Diets don't work. We know 97% of people that go on a diet gain it all back. It doesn't help. Ah, well, before menopause, clinicians can educate their patients, not just female, on what body changes to expect and be more mindful. I like mindful about which medications to not prescribe. Now watch that. Frequently prescribed like promoting drugs like antidepressants, even worse antipsychotics for mood swings, gabapentin for hot flashes. Now, did you know they cause weight gain as a side effect? Many people are never told and they don't know. I gained most of my weight on antidepressant drugs. Not a solution if you want to get off them. Don't just stop them. Book a call with me. The link is underneath the video. If you want to talk about any of your struggles, I'm here for you. Uh, just book a call and it's free and let's talk and or go into one of my next programs. And I'm sure we can find a solution that works for you. That's it for this time. And I hope you enjoyed my little uh, science criticism discourse. I hope to see you again. Take care. Bye bye.